Welcome to Papa's Workshop. I've got some real exciting news. I have finally added a vacuum pump to the shop. Now, typically, when you have the vacuum pump and you have your tank, you're making silicone molds and those kinds of things. Nope, we're not doing that. I want to be able to add this vacuum pump over on the CNC machine. Right out of the box, this is the vacuum pump. The only thing that I have done is take the assembled manifold and attach it to the lid. You do have the manual, please read the manual. It always has excellent information. And don't forget to add the oil. Right here on the back of the unit, you do have the off and on switch. And of course, on this side over here, you have all of the specs. I'll let you read this. Vacuum pumps are excellent to have around the automotive industry and in the AC industry, but I'm using it in the wood shop. So when you get this, you also have the oil. Please fill the reservoir with the oil. I have it just below the maximum. There are two caps that you can put the oil in. I used the blue one to fill it up. There's only one reservoir, but you can put oil in either one of those outlets, and I did try it just to see what would happen. And it went into the same reservoir. The manifold is pre-assembled. The only thing I had to do was attach it to the lid with a bolt and a washer that was provided, and then simply attach the hose to it. It was literally that simple. You also have a little gasket that goes right here on top of the pot, and again, that just slips on. It is just a piece of the tubing that has the slit in it, and it just slips right over on top of this pot without any difficulty whatsoever. Once you have the hose tightened at each end, this manifold is installed onto this lid. You're ready to test it out. You have your oil level full. Keep this valve open to begin with. Put whatever product that you have in here. This is perfect for making silicone molds and using the silicone to be able to get the air out of it. And if you start it this way, you turn this on and then slowly close this valve and you'll see the vacuum start. We'll continue to close that all the way down. You can see the vacuum building and usually about 25 inches is plenty. As you can see, I stopped it at 28 and a half. This point, I can close this valve. This vacuum will stay right there and you can successfully get the air out of that silicone or really whatever you need to have in this pot. This is very, very solid. It's not coming loose. When you're ready to release this vacuum, slowly open up this valve. And then this lid will easily come off. Very simple operation, very, very effective to be able to have a vacuum pump and a vacuum chamber in the shop. Like I always say, test, test, experiment, and try different things. Some things will work, some things won't. What I'm going to make these vacuum pads out of is a piece of trim board. And this is actually the PVC type of trim board that I'm going to use for this. Let's move over now and start working on this very, very simple uh, vacuum pad. This trim board is seven and a quarter inches wide. Based on the size of the drill bit that I had, I decided to cut this six inches uh, long. So it's a six inch by seven and a quarter inch pad that I'm going to use to make this design. Now I've been shopping for several days now to be able to find different items that would work to make this vacuum pad. The next step went over to the drill press. I want to be able to drill a hole dead center about two thirds of the way down through the thickness of this material. The bit that I'm using is a Forstner bit which will give me a flat bottom and this is a half inch in diameter. I decided to be able to drill this about two thirds of the way through. I don't want to go all the way through. 
about two thirds of the way is all that's necessary. And this is a three quarter inch piece of uh, trim board that I'm using. So I drilled down roughly about five eighths of an inch. Nothing was measured here. And that is the resulting hole. The next step is to drill a hole through the edge of this to connect the hole that I just put into the center. Now ideally I could use the drill press, stand this board up on the edge and drill it. But guess what? This drill press is not big enough to be able to accommodate a six inch um, piece of material. So what do you do? You head over to the lathe. The drill press that I have is too small. So I'm gonna set this lathe up to be able to drill this. That should work right there in the center. The thing that I've done so far is just taken a square and drew a straight line through the center of that hole out to the edge of the PVC material. And then I'm just lining up with this chuck to be able to have that bit be dead center with that line. Now the thought is I'll drill this halfway through to this hole in the center, flip it around, and then I'll drill it from the other side to come to the center. My first test is just going to be to the center point. To drill the second hole, that is if I want to daisy chain these together. My air hose will ultimately go into this end, and then I can link multiple vacuum pads together by having a hole on the other side. Now we get to find out if this is going to work. This is where you move all the cameras out of the way, make sure that you're out of the way in case this doesn't stay on the truck. And success, it did. So now it's time to drill the hole. This is a 9 30 seconds drill bit that I'm using to be able to drill this hole into this PVC. And this actually is working fantastic. So why am I using a 9 30 second inch bit? That's because the drip line that I'm using for the landscape hose is 9 30 seconds. If it was a different diameter, then I would be using a different drill bit. I turned the camera around so that you can see the other side. I want to show you the actual drilling of this hole through the center of this PVC. It's really a very simple concept. You just have to be very careful since that uh, PVC board is flying around the air and it's not a round circle. You do not want to get your hands in the way of that at all. So make sure that you stay way away and if you feel that this is not a safe operation for you and your shop, don't do it. Figure out a different way to be able to drill this hole. Maybe you have a large enough drill press in your shop to be able to easily do this. All done, let's take a look and see the results. If you look at that, that hole came out dead center exactly where I wanted it. Can't get any better than that. The hose that I'm going to use to connect all this together is the Mr. Landscaper. This is a landscape uh, drip line, and I think this will work perfect. The outside diameter of this is 930 seconds. That's the size of the bit that I used, and I want to be able to shove this right inside and see if that will be tight enough to be able to hold the vacuum. If not, I have a plan B. I have this connector right here that I'll actually be able to tap and then screw this in. At that point, I'll be able to plug the hose in easily. So that will be a plan B. This certainly is going to be a cost effective way to be able to do it if this will work with that hose just stuck in like that and that will pull the vacuum. When you're making up things as you go, you always have to have a plan B. I wanted to be able to keep this super simple and cost effective. Not sure if this is gonna work, but this is what I picked up at the big box store. This is the premium rubber self stick weather seal. And I'm gonna put this down around this and we're gonna see if that will hold the vacuum to make this work. Super easy, super simple. That's the philosophy in this shop. We'll see if it actually works. Before attaching this weather seal, I wanna make sure that all the dust and dirt is off of this PVC board so that it will stick. 
I had looked for several weeks now for different materials that I could use and actually bought a number of them. And this premium rubber door seal is what I settled on. This is going to be the first test of several to see what works best and how I can adapt it in the shop. If it doesn't work, well, you'll be the first to see it right here. And we'll have to go to, again, plan B on the next item that I have already purchased. And the other thing I have to consider, too, is how I'm going to make the turn. Do I cut it or do I try to bend it? Now, I'm not going to try to do anything fancy. All I want it to do is be able to stick on this outer edge of this PVC board. I think what I'm going to try to do is see if this is flexible enough that I can bend and make a nice gentle turn at the corners. I really don't want to cut it because anytime you cut this material, you run the risk of having the uh, losing that vacuum. I don't want that. And so far, making this first curve worked out really well. This is a very flexible material and allowed me to make that turn quite nicely. The other thing that I'm finding out also is this material could easily be stretched. I don't want to stretch it. I want to keep it in as much as possible the original form without stretching it and without pulling it excessively. So I have to be very careful as I make these turns and bend that material around that corner. I don't want to stretch it and so far this is working out good. If I stretch this material, I think it will fail. So I'm just leaving this as natural as possible, sticking it down and making these turns. So far, I think this is working out really, really well. I'm back at the beginning now and I have to cut this. Again, I want to cut it where it's just a hair long so that I can squish it down and make the joint as tight as possible. I had also considered adding a little bit of hot glue if necessary to create a good tight seal. I'm going to try it without this. Again, I want this to be the most simple vacuum pad ever made anywhere by anyone. So now this rubber seal is on. It looks like I have a tight joint. I think this is going to hold really, really well. All we need to do now is try it out and see if it's going to hold. Next, let me grab the hose. I want to plug it in and see if that will go in deep enough where it will stay. And yeah, that looks like that's going to work well. So that will go in. It's tight and it's not going to just pull out. At the hardware store, I picked up three different type of connectors that I'm going to need to be able to make this work. This one will actually slide into the hose that is from the vacuum pump itself. And then this one is the eighth inch barb that will slip into my irrigation line. They have this as the MIP, and they did not have this available in the FIP, which is the female iron pipe uh, threads. So because of that, I had to pick up the adapter to be able to put it together with this one. So let me show you how I put all of this together. I'm going to use some of this Teflon tape just to make sure that I get a good seal. I'm really not sure if this is important to do on something this small with this type of uh, vacuum. But it's something that I have always done, so why change now? I don't think it can hurt anything by adding the Teflon tape. I'm only wrapping this around a couple of turns. I know normally if you are doing something like a water line, you'd be wrapping this down at least three times. But I really don't think it's necessary. I think this will form an airtight seal just as it is. With the tape on, I can take the other adapter and screw it on to the end. I grabbed a couple of adjustable wrenches and just to tighten it about another quarter of a turn. So step one is accomplished. I need to take this 3 8 barb and put it into the hose that came with the vacuum pump. Tighten that down. Do the same thing. I'm going to add some Teflon tape to this. Well, like I said, I'm not sure that this is going to really help or not. But if it failed, I don't want to have it blamed on the threads leaking the vacuum. So this is good insurance for that and have one less potential problem. 
So now that the Teflon tape's on there, let's just screw it right onto the other end. Again, I'll grab the uh, adjustable wrenches and tighten this about another quarter of a turn just to make sure that it's snug. This completes the adapter to make the transition from the 3 8 hose from the vacuum pump itself down to that landscaping uh, irrigation line that I need to use for this pump. Now that was an eighth inch diameter. So all I will do is just slip that hose now onto this barb in and it will be ready to test out. This without a doubt is the absolute simplest design vacuum pad that I think is possible. Will it work? Let's find out. I can feel the suction through there. We'll just take this flat piece of wood and put it right down. And yes, it holds extremely well. Let's flip this over. Push that down onto the workbench. You're not moving that at all. So this absolute, total, super simple uh, vacuum pad works fantastic. I got to try this one more time. Let's make sure that this was not an accident. We'll turn this on. Push that down. Oh yes. That is not turning loose. That works perfect. Absolutely fantastic. So, will this work on the CNC machine doing a natural carving? I think that is absolutely the most simple design ever put forth by anybody anywhere to be able to make a vacuum pad. Well, the simplest vacuum pad in the world, I went ahead and just put two screws, one in each corner, screwed it down to the waste board. That should be plenty strong enough. Then I'm going to set this right here and we'll put the vacuum on and that'll suck that down. And there we go. That's in place. That's not moving anywhere at all. All right, I've moved the machine over to the center point right here. You see that just sucked down nice and tight. We're gonna use the center point as the beginning. Uh, XYZ home position is gonna be right there in the center. It's important that I set up this the same exact way. Currently, it's down at the bottom left-hand corner. All I need to do is highlight both of these and you see this right here is in the center point. That is good. On the X, I'm gonna move this to zero. And on the Y, I'm gonna put that at zero also. It looks like it's off the board, but that's okay. The center point is right there. That matches the machine. This will carve just fine. When you look at the preview, that's all you're gonna see, and that's okay also. If I hit simulate, you can see exactly what it's going to look like when I carve. And it does show that it's not on the board, but it's in the work area and that will carve just fine. I know this is confusing to a lot of people, but I hope that you can see exactly what's happening in this simulation and what's actually on the CNC machine itself. It matches exactly. All that's left to do is just go step by step through this checklist. I'm gonna run this without the dust boot so that you can actually see what's going on. And now for the true test to see if this vacuum pad is going to hold with this vacuum pump. It's anybody's guess at this point to see if it's going to be strong enough to be able to hold. So far, it's looking pretty good. We'll check back on this in just a few minutes to see how it's doing. And just so you know, I'm using a 90 degree V-bit to do this carving and it is looking fantastic. I'm very pleased with how it looks. It is absolutely perfect. And the vacuum pump, along with this vacuum pad, had performed superbly. The carving's finished now. It's time to turn off the vacuum pump so that I can get this project 
off of the uh, vacuum pad and you can see it just lifts right off. I'm going to clean it up, get rid of the sawdust, and let's take a look at the finished product. I don't know about you, but I think this is absolutely perfect. All the lines are sharp. There was no movement whatsoever. The vacuum pump held true along with the vacuum pad. Fantastic job. You don't need it. This worked great. And it's very inexpensive household item that you can pick up at any of the big box stores or hardware stores. It's readily available. Why go anywhere else to buy the expensive stuff when you can do this? Now, here's what I'd like to be able to do. I'm going to be making some additional designs to be able to attach to the CNC machine. Leave me a comment down below what type of design that you think I should create and the uses that I can have for this vacuum pump and the vacuum pads. In the next video, I'm going to set up one with this craft type foam. This is a very thin sheet. I'm going to cut it out and glue it onto the board and see if this will work also. Very inexpensive. This is less than a dollar and I think this will work just as well. We're going to find out in the next video. I'm very impressed with this vacuum pump and I'm going to put a link in the description below so that you can take a look at it a little bit closer and I have a discount code there for you also. I think you'd have to agree that this very easy simple design which was super cheap to make worked flawlessly. I want to take this opportunity to thank everybody for watching the day. I really appreciate each and every one of you here and look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye-bye now.